What is up, Pokemon fans? Simon here. Welcome to Hannah Talk. Hope you're all doing fantastic. And happy Halloween to everyone out there, including my Australian mates out there. Today, I'm here with a very special guest. Now, he is an actor who is best known to fans in the Pokemon world from characters from the likes of Gary right down to Meowth. And this year is celebrating 26 years of the franchise. But he's also played across series such as Yu-Gi-Oh!, Mew Mew Power, The Slayers, Sonic the Hedgehog, and so much more. Please welcome the amazing James Carter C Cathcart. Thank you, Simon. It's funny when you mention all that and so much more stuff. I have learned more from fans about stuff I did back in the like late 80s and early 90s. Like I just kind of went, really? I did that? And so it's great. I know there's a <laughs> lot of stuff. That, so. But it's been Pokemon really the last, especially the last 20 years of uh, when I started taking over writing the, the English adaptations. I just, there just ended up not being much time for uh, anything else, but it's fine. I love doing all the, the scripts and the characters and, the, and being silly. Silly is good. That's, that's absolutely fantastic, and that's true. How are you? I'm good. It's, it's funny for a Sunday, which I always thought was supposed to be the day of rest. There hasn't been much rest. Going on today. But that's okay. I feel fine. I feel fine. Thank you. And how are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's obviously a beautiful day out here in Australia. And of course, today is Halloween, of course, right here in Australia, even though it's a day earlier up in the States. Um, well, it's officially tomorrow, but there have been so many different, like, depending on where you are. I'm in northern Indiana right now, and uh, there's parts of northern Indiana where they trick or treated yesterday. And there's parts today and parts tomorrow, which maybe makes sense, but uh, um, it's just not like, you know, the old days when I would just grab a pillow and go out on the 34th no matter what. <laughs> so, it's okay. A lot of cool costumes. Absolutely. That is, that's fantastic. Now, let's get right into the, like, the very beginning, of course. How did you get started in acting? Yu-Gi-Oh! There was some, uh, you know, I played Wii 
Weevil in Yu-Gi-Oh! And there was a scene where, you know, Weevil was a little snot. And there was a scene where I had all of, um, of uh, Yu-Gi's cards and I threw them off a bridge. And all these people, they, they couldn't believe I did that. And they were like mad at me. And I said, I really, I mean, I did the voice of doing that, but I, I wouldn't do that to Yu-Gi. So, the, but there's a lot of stories and things that I, I just keep learning from everybody that I talk to. So it's just been a wild ride. That's that's absolutely fantastic, and that is that's definitely true. Of course, it's uh, obviously you talking about the stories about how you're mostly remembered for a lot of the Pokemon stuff, but you also have those those fans that recognize you from other worlds that you've done in the past. Specifically, as you mentioned, Yu-Gi-Oh, which reminds me of a story of uh, the story of Alec Guinness on how he was well known for Star Wars. That he actually got really frustrated because people didn't recognize him for a lot of the other roles that he's done in the past. And he was a huge name actor before Star Wars even came into the picture. But, sure. But I guess it just goes to prove. And it, But on the other end of that equation, you've also got actors like Christian Bale, for example, who's, who once said it wouldn't matter to him if people would only remember him as Batman from the Dark Knight trilogy. So uh. there you go. <laughs> well. time to time and it'll happen at anime conventions that a lot of people are still watching Pokemon and it's of course generational and I, I know my son is 29 and he's been watching it since he was four um, and all of his friends they're still watching it and I keep meeting new um, people you know in their 20s and teens and then I'll meet there'll be five six four year olds that are just starting to watch it now so it really has staying power and it but I have to when I go to these anime conventions, I'm just constantly reminded because the, the scope of my work is either writing scripts or going into a studio and dubbing. And um, it's when I meet all of these people that just I mean they grew up, you know, loving the show. And I I've, I've had people come up. I had uh, once there was a a fan who came up to me and she said she was crying and she said because of james i was able to come out to my parents and we just cried i mean that's the kind of effect not everybody but that was the kind of effect that i just i love that's the best part of pokemon is that is that it really affects people in a positive way you know absolutely so Definitely, that is absolutely fantastic. And of course, hitting 26, now of course this being the 26th year of the series, here's to another 25 or 26 more, of course. <laughs> well, well, we'll see about that. I don't see any signs that it's, that it's uh, uh, slowing down at all. But um, season 25 has been, it's been great. Of course, I can't say anything about it because I don't think it's even started running yet. But um, we, I've been writing it, dubbing it, working on it and stuff, and it's, it's, it's really something. It's worth seeing. I, I think it's a real special series. So. That's fantastic. That's absolutely wonderful. Now who, now, who would you consider to be the one that sort of inspired you to go like into acting? You've obviously talk, told the story about that, but who would you consider to be like your influences as an actor? Adapting is, is it's a challenge. 
challenge. It, it really takes some hard work to get down in there and make sure that the, the jokes are right and the characters are right and stuff. But um, doing the voices is like playtime. I go in there and I'm having fun. I'm just fun to be so so filmier I can be the happier I am, which is why I gravitate towards the. You know, I did. There was a character in in uh, Utana that what was a revolutionary girl Utana. There was a character named Miki M I K I who was a piano player, and you know. That show is so weird because mostly everybody just kind of sat around and looked fashionable and all that kind of stuff. But it was, a, but it, and it was straight. Mickey was very normal voiced and all that stuff. And I was happy to do the part. And I would go to these anime conventions and play piano because that's what I am. I'm a pianist, so I would play songs from the show and other shows and stuff. But I really love like meow. I mean, I just love, I love writing tags for them, too, because they're, Meowth and James, like, I, I get to write the jokes, and then I get to go voice them. I'm, I'm very lucky, for sure. That's absolutely fantastic. And it's also really good to see that, like, um, obviously in the fact with the, a lot of the voice actors that I've seen in the past, they also have that musical background as well, and are able to bring that sort of musicality into their work. The best examples of that is, of course, yourself, and also Eric Stewart, um, Brina Palencia, and uh, re everyone, basically, which is just absolutely fantastic. And even getting the chance to also do songs uh, for the show as well, which is just amazing. Uh -huh. I know, I, it, the, the opportunity to do that sort of thing, it, it doesn't come along very often. We did an album, a Pokemon album, years ago called Pokemon Christmas Bash. And um, I don't think I did, I got, actually don't remember. I did it in my studio. And so everybody was coming over and singing all the different parts because this is back in the original cast. So Eric was there and, and uh, Veronica Taylor was there. And and it, it, I think it did really well. And I loved the songs because I co-wrote the songs as well. But it, but it'd be so often there'll be some that they, you know, uh, they'll need a song That's absolutely fantastic, and that is really, really wonderful. And of course, just a bit of an off question here, not just to you, James, but also to the listeners out there when the up, when this interview is officially up, but let me know in the comments below to all the listeners out there, do you want to see an actual album with all the original Pokemon cast members together, not as the characters, but as themselves, just do a full-on album together? That would be amazing. Well, it would be, it would be amazing because, you know, it's, Starting in season nine, it was a it was a pretty much different cast um, because then because the production moved from four kids to uh, basically they started their own uh, Pokemon USA, their own company. So so um, that's when I took over with the parts of Meowth and James and Professor Oak and all that stuff. But in a perfect world, I would love it because in the very beginning we would. Uh, when the show was on the Channel 11 in New York, we would go every Friday, all of us would go together and do promos for the Saturday show. And then they would run it Friday night and Saturday morning and all that kind of stuff. But that was the one time when I got to see everybody. We were all in one big room, and uh, it was just great. But most of the time, when I'm working, um, I don't see anybody else except, you know, my good buddy Alan Gus, who's the uh, engineer, and then... Uh, Lisa Ortiz is producing from uh, L.A., and I'm in New York, and 
But no, that's absolutely fantastic. And fingers crossed, because this year being the 26th year of Pokemon, like, obviously because now conventions are starting to fully come back, especially here in Australia, it would be amazing to have all, most of the original cast members down here in Australia just for a reunion show. That would be amazing. Oh, that would be great. I, I'm not sure quite how they pull that off. I mean, I've never been to Australia. I would love, I've always wanted to, uh, to go. I, you know, it's just, actually, there really hasn't been, uh, I've been so busy doing all this stuff. But, but if, if that could somehow work out, I think that would be, that would be wonderful. So, fingers crossed. Absolutely, that would, that would be amazing. That would be absolutely fantastic. Now, now, obviously, going a little bit further into like uh, your entire career and everything. Now, with any sort of series that you've done in the past, or you currently do now, d did you do you walk into a series or a project expecting to play a certain role, or is it like a jack in the box? You don't know what to expect. <laughs> I would say it's it's much more like a jack in the box. Although I must say, since I like I said, adapting all the scripts. I mean, a script can take anywhere from eight hours to 12 hours for one episode and so if you have you know umpteen episodes in a season and we've been at it for how many seasons there's just there's really not much time for me to go out um, and, and audition and see what's going on I get asked every so often but but a lot of times I just have to turn it down because I you know I, this Pokemon really takes that and and playing piano and you know trying to find the time to to uh, play and you know write and do all that kind of stuff. It's I really have to, to uh, scramble to get it, but but I do it. And then so new shows. Um, at this point, and currently, I'm not really involved in any new show. I mean, the last time there were a lot of shows was when it was with Fork and Kids Entertainment, and they had eight shows every Saturday morning. They had eight half-hour shows, and that's when they had Pokemon. And That's, but that's fantastic though. That's that's absolutely wonderful. Now, now of course, for a lot of anime series out there, but specifically looking at the Pokemon series, is based on, of course, the video game franchise. But with a lot of other anime shows, you have manga, which has usually been the basis for any anime series. Have you ever read the manga for any particular anime series that you worked on, or heard about a particular project before you started working on that series? Actually, it's a it's a it's a separate animal. I know it exists, um, and there there you know there were several video games where we did, we did there were no voices on it at all. The last time I remember, I think Team Rocket was just in one, and this was maybe a couple of years ago. But there was there was a video game called Pokemon Snap where everybody was taking pictures and all that stuff, and and Snap was the the character was the photographer, and I I did the voice for Snap, so. I did a lot of um, work on that particular game, but but I would say mostly it's kind of separate. And it's not um, they don't have that many voices on on the shows, at least that I'm aware of for for Pokemon video games. Right. I used, oh, I'm sorry. Let me just say one thing because I just remembered it. When Pokemon Go came out, I had a ball because I was in Manhattan, and you know there would be these groups of kids. Uh, a lot of boys, and they'd be all walking around trying to catch Pokemon, and they'd go up to churches, and they'd go up to schools, and and so I, I, I'd i walk up behind them, and I didn't want to scare them, but I would go, so did you catch me yet? And they would turn around and look and see my face with a beard and glasses, and they just thought I was psychotic. They, they didn't think it was really me doing that stuff, but I had a blast <laughs> doing it to see them with the look on their face, but that game was really, I think it's still is pretty popular but it was it was nuts for a while you know it definitely was incredibly nuts to say the least but no that's just that's just absolutely fantastic and it definitely I definitely have to agree on where like 
with the original Pokemon games, how there was really not a whole lot of dialogue happening around that, but they slowly right. started bringing in dialogue to some of the later games, or at least games that where dialogue was really required in this case. But of course, you've also got anime series, for example, Yu-Gi-Oh, which is based on the manga, which that in and of itself is vastly different from what happened in the original animated series. It was so different. Well, those different shows, um, like I know right now, uh, you know, because I'm in touch with Eric and I'm in touch with, I haven't talked to Veronica in a long time, but, you know, everybody that was involved in the original cast of, of, of uh, Pokemon, you know, they were also involved in all these other shows, but they go out to these conventions and they can, they can do any voices that, that they want because they're not under uh, contract. And Pokemon USA prefers that the current cast does not ever go to anime conventions and do any of the voices. Uh, the other shows, like Yu-Gi-Oh! and stuff, it's no problem. I can go to a convention and do Weevil until I make everybody crazy. But uh, I have to be very, very careful um, that, you know, I don't do the voices uh, too much. Because they think that, and they're correct in that, it's not that I'm the character, it's just that I'm doing a voice of a character. But they want to definitely concentrate on the fact that it's the character that, you know, right. is making the, making the noise. So. That, that, and do it absolutely fantastically as well, which is amazing. You're, you're very kind. You're, thank you for that. Now, looking across at um, not just... Uh, you've obviously spoken a fair bit about Pokemon, how you've been involved in a lot of the script writing when doing the translation, but for any series in particular where your character is a main character or is featured prominently in the series, do you know where your character is going in terms of the story or in terms of its arc, or is everything recorded out of context? Fantastic. No, that's that's absolutely wonderful and everything. Now, going across into like your some of your best known roles here. Now, you've obviously spoken a fair bit about Pokemon in playing all these different characters. But what has it been like? But what was it like stepping into the world of Pokemon for the first time? And especially now, last year, and especially this year, hitting twenty six years, celebrating such an incredible milestone as that. Absolutely. 
Like, go with the flow. It's really what it's been. <laughs> no, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. And it's really amazing to see, like, how far the series has come and that it's hit such an incredible milestone as that. It's so... It's so crazy, and especially because Pokemon was like the first anime that I watched back when I was a kid, and it's still very close to my heart. It's still an anime oh, that means so much to me. That's great. That's great. It's... I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, when I was, you know, my son was a senior in high school, and this is like 12 years ago or whatever, and all of his friends were into Pokemon, like, just big time. And so I would, I would drive him to school. Seven in the morning, so I was kind of half awake. And I remember one time I drove up, and, and and my son got out of the car, and he stood. There was a line of like eight or nine classmates, guys, all standing there with their heads bowed. And so he got up and stood next to them, and one of the other guys like stepped forward and said, "Mr. Castor, will you please do carry on for us?" And so I did. I was like half awake, but they they were like four years old again. They were so thrilled, and that just, that's the best part, is, is seeing kids um, that really enjoy it, and, and they've watched it as much as they have. I mean, it's just, that's the best thing, that's by far the best thing. That and the emotional, because Pokemon, I'll just say this, sometimes they tackle emotional issues, like the one I mentioned earlier on, but it's amazing how, I mean, I'll be right here crying, because they just, they know how to do that uh, sort of emotionality, and so I think um, that's what, that's another one of the, uh, my favorite things about it, because as silly as they can get, they can handle some pretty heavy-duty subjects, so. Absolutely, well, and which actually was going to go into, um, obviously talking about that, because you've got all these different kind of streaming companies that, or dubbing companies, that when they handle certain anime, for example, they tend, like in the case of Four Kids, for example, which has been famous for taking anime that was really dark, really serious, and sort of turning it down to bring it to more sort of, uh, general, like a younger audience. But on the other end of that equation, you basically got Funimation, for example, that are basically saying we're not holding, we're not going to be holding back in this case. We need to do just, we need to bring it up to this level because we're trying to bring it out to a general audience, which actually goes to where when Pokemon was originally under four kids, it definitely had some dark moments to say the least, but it was getting it across to more of a younger audience. Whereas the current uh -huh. company is like, we need to do more hardcore stuff in this case. Yes, this is Pokemon right. at the end of the day, but we need to kind of showcase that stuff at the same time. And I think that's fantastic. I think that's really great to see. Well, I think four kids, if my memory serves me well, they got a lot of criticism for, for the way they, um, I don't know. They were, to me, they made a little too light of, of a lot of stuff that, that that I think the fans probably got a little annoyed at. But uh, but I know now because Pokemon USA. I mean, that's their show. It's not like when four kids had eight shows going, and they're very careful. And uh, I you know I I take great care to make sure that the emotion is uh, honored. You know, and they they want that to be. Now there's sometimes when like especially the team rock and stuff. I just have I just have to rechange I have to change everything because the translations you know, you can see their facial expressions like for Team Rocket and you know they're saying goofy stuff, but it just it's lost in the translation. You can't it, there's nothing funny about it. So I just go and rewrite everything and if there's a problem they'll tell me and then we'll work on it. But nine times out of ten I get I get my what I want in there. You know, and it, but it's completely different. So it's like, I think beyond adaptation, it's kind of just rewriting stuff. I have to, but I enjoy it. That's absolutely fantastic, and that's that's just wonderful. Now, speaking about a little bit more with regards to four kids to Pokemon USA. Now, when the transition happened with Pokemon, when it was going from four kids to Pokemon USA, and most of the original actors ha had been replaced, were you aware of what was happening at the time? Um, I think it took me a little while, um, but Four Kids was basically telling um, the original cast that they, they, 
they couldn't do Pokemon anymore because it was going to a whole different production company. So um, I don't know what the original reason for that was. It may have been financial. I, I actually don't know, but but I do know that they wanted a, 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 a new cast, and for a while it was pretty it was pretty intense. And over the years, I mean, I was in both. But what happened was, I was working for four kids, and when uh, season, what, when they, I think season eight was the last season that four kids did. I mean, I got fired. You know, they fired me there. The head of four kids said to me, you're never working in this place again. Well, it went to a place, and they kind of depended on me because I'd been doing it for a while. So they, the okay, in USA kind of, I don't want to say give me free reign, but they, they definitely let me do the right things that had, you know, come from the earlier show because they trusted me. And, uh, uh, so, but it was, it was, I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of stories back there and I don't want to stir up anything, but, but it was pretty, uh, intense there for a while. And politically kids, you know, a lot of kids thought that the new cast was awful all this kind of stuff and I kept saying well wait I'm still you know doing what I did so I was the one that survived but but I had to get fired and go to the to the new company to be able to continue doing it it's very weird wow <laughs> that's that's insane that is just absolutely yeah. fantastic. absolutely crazy but mm -hmm. what I can say on that is that the the new car obviously the cast of like the the later Pokemon series and everything have been doing a fantastic job and everything they've all been amazing and for the original and for all the original cast members i'm definitely from my opinion because i love both of them for completely different reasons the original cast members straight off the bat they will forever remain important to the legacy that they have started with the pokemon series and they will forever, forever remain important to a lot of fans hearts uh -huh. and well i i noticed that and, and i guess i shouldn't be surprised but when the new cast started, and especially in season nine, when I was doing Meowth and, and James and all those people, um, you know, the original Meowth was not, the, he wasn't actually the original, but Maddie Blaustein, she was the, the from like season one, uh, a few episodes in until season nine, and she was absolutely brilliant, but she, she passed away. And, and what I noticed is when I took it over, I really wanted Meowth to be a, a real Weisenheimer, just a real smart Alec. And I noticed that you, they started drawing him like that. And at the beginning, I was like, it's got to be coincidence. Do they really pay attention? But they do pay attention. They, they pay attention. America's a huge market for them. So I did notice characters uh, would, would kind of change with the different voices. Like when I started doing uh, James, there was some, uh, um, there's an episode called Sweet Baby James that might have been like the second episode I did for season nine, where it's one of those things where I was like crying in the studio, just trying to get through the line. Um, he started getting really emotional and sensitive and having um, gentler moments. And, and so, yeah, I like the way they, where they've all gone. So uh, I'm really happy about it, but I, I really do think that the original uh, the Japanese animators and stuff were, were paying attention to, to the new voices. And I think it ended up working out just fine. I mean, I was a little worried that nobody was going to like the new voices or the things that I was doing, but it's fine. It all worked out fine. Change is never easy for anybody. No, you know? no, it is definitely not. But as, I've, but as I've mentioned before, like, the original cast will forever remain important to the legacy of... Pokemon, and they're all amazing actors, and still out there working today, and know how much Pokemon means to them, and the new cast is equally as fantastic. Well, I, I think so too, and you know, your original, your idea of kind of gathering all these people together, I think, I would love to see everybody together, talking about this stuff, and being positive, and, and uh, kind of embracing the past, and embracing the present and the future. So, you know, maybe, I think it's a really good idea. So uh, maybe it'll happen. I don't know. It's a lot of people. <laughs> That's it. Well, to all the listeners out there, to contact any con convention here in Australia, particularly Supernova, and let's make it happen. Because it needs oh. to happen. That would be amazing. Yeah, that would be great. Absolutely. Now, looking across at the future of the Pokemon series, 
what would you personally want to explore in the future of Pokemon? Well, they're kind of... I mean, there are some things that just never change, you know? Um, I mean, Ash is... is how old is he now? He's been 10 <laughs> for 25 years, so... But um, there are parts... There are parts of his personality that have gotten more mature, but then he's just as, as dorky as ever at the same time, which I love. Um, so I, I know that they're going to be, you know, um, always in charge of, of the, where the characters are going and how they look and, you know, maybe not what they say, but, but the different storylines and stuff. But I think they're, they're, I mean, it's amazing to me. It's been going for so long and it still, you know, episodes still get me emotionally and, um, I, I think that the, the Japan just has their eye on the right stuff to, to, to make Pokemon continue to grow and to have people to keep, you know, stay interested in it. So I think it's great. Absolutely. And it's still going incredibly strong to this day forward. And for a long, long time to come, that's amazing. That is just fantastic. Mm-hmm. Now, now, of course, when people think about Pokemon, there was also the release of the Detective Pikachu movie done as a live action film. Did you ever get get the chance to see it? I never saw it. It's not that I didn't have the chance. I just never saw it. We had absolutely nothing to do with it. You know, um, the Pikachu character has been the same female uh, voice actor since the first episode. Um, and but although it was a completely different voice in the, the the live action movie, so we just we didn't do anything. Nothing to do. It was a diff- whole different production company. It was really a, a Hollywood thing. Right. Well, what's been your opinion on anime and video games being adapted for live action? <laughs> I, I I don't even know that I have an opinion. I'm not the biggest video game player, and I just think that they sometimes have success and sometimes they fall short. I don't know. It's, uh, but I've been focused on the, the, the anime for so long. You know, um, I, I probably am not the right person to ask. <laughs> Somebody that's a real gamer definitely can tell you better than me, because I'm just not that up on. Uh, I mean, there definitely. I know there's a lot of live action stuff going on, um, but you know, kind of brings out uh, the old fart in me. I'm still <laughs> trying to do Team Rocket joke. No, that, that's absolutely fantastic, though. I think, in my personal opinion, that I think it's fantastic that that a lot of these properties are starting to see, like, live-action adaptations. Obviously, the best example of that is definitely the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, which blew ah. up with the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie just a couple of years ago, and is now starting to build out their own cinematic universe, especially after the release of the second movie just this year. So I think it's fantastic that we're starting to see all these different adaptations coming to life and then starting to take it a bit more seriously in that. The same thing true with anime, of course. Even though anime has definitely been a bit more of a mixed bag, though. But if they can do it for video games, then they can definitely do it for anime. Yeah. Well, and, you know, the very first Sonic, well, Sonic X, I think is what it was, that was way back when four kids had it, I did the voice of Vector the Crocodile. And um, I I thought he was the greatest because it, it just I just sound like a total idiot. It was great because he wasn't an idiot, but they but he had some catchphrases, you know, like take me to the computer room or whatever the stuff was, and it got to be um, really popular, you know. But I know there have been how many versions of, since then? It's been a lot, I know. So I don't even know where they are right now, but but it's very I know it's really successful. Right? absolutely right. yeah absolutely it's it's that's just fantastic now going across into other series that you play we've obviously spoken a little bit about the Yu-Gi-Oh series with playing Weevil Underwood what was it like stepping into the world of Yu-Gi-Oh well it was really powerful too um, Weevil again was like it just seemed like the, I, I think when they heard me audition for that because you know the, the guy uh Right now, because I've been talking for so long, uh, that did the actual voice of you. And that's not what I do. You know, you can hear my voice. You know? <laughs> so Weevil is just this little crunched up, little, 
know, he, his whole thing to me was he was nasty and he'd try to screw everything up and then all of a sudden at the end he'd go apart and then he would start crying and faint. That was the fourth film of that. But um, other, other, I mean, there are shows, seriously, that I that I know I did major parts in that I, I, I need to be reminded. And every so often I'll go on a website and I'll go, oh, well, yeah, I remember that now because it's been a long time, you know? No, but that, that's just fantastic. And looking back fondly at the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series, like, it was a, it was a fantastic series, and you did a fantastic job in, in playing Weevil in that series. It was so fantastic. And everyone, across the board was, and everyone across the board was amazing during that. And it's really good to see that Yu-Gi-Oh! still has, like, in the same way the Pokemon does, like, still such a big following in this case. And even with, like, the... Uh, like with the card game, making such a big resurgence in that. Mm-hmm. And well, I, I do remember the thing about Weevil that it was it was he was not he was probably the hardest character I ever had to do because not only did I have to have a little scrunched up voice, but it got so intense. I remember doing a three hour session. I think Eric was actually directing it, but I went home. I I had like 102 fever for like three days. I was really sick. I blew my cords out. And uh, I was actually when it stopped, I was kind of grateful because, you know, I, I sing too. <laughs> I don't want to wreck <laughs> my voice doing some of these characters. But the but the stuff that I did, when I hear it now, which isn't very often, but when I do, I'm I'm really happy that I did it. But I'm also happy that I don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's but no, that that's that's crazy. But that's just absolutely nuts. But. <laughs> Now, talking a little bit more about with regards to like Yu-Gi-Oh, but all these other franchises franchises that you've worked on, would you will you will we hope to see you come back into the world of Yu-Gi-Oh and Sonic the Hedgehog down the line at some point? Uh, you know, without without getting too far into it, I know that they've had different iterations and stuff. Um, they they how can I say this? Because of the politics way back of uh, when I got fired from Four Kids. Um, it's not for kids anymore, but it did morph into some other production company. But honestly, they don't want me. They won't. They won't. One of the directors, and maybe it was for you, he wanted me to, to do something, and they said, no, no. So, which is fine with me, but I think it's a little silly after all these years, you know, uh, like, let's drop it, you know. We're all in this together, but uh, I... I don't think I'll be doing anything more for those shows. There was a show that I did, and every time I, I talk to somebody, I always want to mention this because it was only like 32 episodes maybe, but it was a show called The Ping Pong Club, and I do the voice of Maeno, M-A-E-N-O, and it's about a bunch of eighth grade boys, and they're just, as eighth grade boys will be, they want girls, 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 girls. And so we had total carte blanche on rewriting that. So sometimes we would just rewrite stuff, you know, on the fly when we were recording it. And some of that stuff is so funny. I know there's a couple of episodes on uh, YouTube, but uh, if, you ever, if you ever get a chance to watch one of those, that may be my favorite anime that I ever did because it's just so insane, you know. And everybody that was at Four Kids, is on that show as well. They were just doing different parts, but we had a blast. It was a ping pong club. Please, if you ever see it, watch it. I think you'll laugh. Absolutely. Well, I definitely have ping pong club on my watch list, without a yeah. doubt. So I'm definitely will. I will definitely will get to it at some point. But no, it would be absolutely amazing just to I think have a full on revival series of the original Yu Gi Oh show because they did have the Dark Side of Dimensions movie just a few years ago, just to cap off everything from the original series. And I think it would be fantastic for them to do a full-on revival series of that original Yu-Gi-Oh! show and bring everyone back into that equation. That would be amazing. It would be great. I, again, I don't think they would bring me in because they, they tried to, and uh, the director tried to, and they said no. So, you know, but it would be in a perfect world. I, I think there's more of a chance that you could get all the Pokemon a lot of people that would be i would be so ready because they're all my friends now and you know they've always been my friends new cast old cast 
absolutely. Stories. There would be some serious stories going on there. <laughs> well, anything is possible. Anything is possible. <laughs> now, yep. now speaking about, of course, like some of the other shows that we're mentioning. Now, you've also played across in series such as The Slayers, Mew Mew Power, One Piece, and Aria the Animation. What was it like playing across all these different shows? Well, they were all happening. Um, Slayers was Central Park Media, so that was a different production company. The other ones you mentioned, I think, were Four Kids Entertainment. Um, it, there was just so much work. These shows were, were going on all at the same time. Uh, I, I don't know that any of us thought too much about it. We just, you kind of go there and you know, while I was at Four Kids, I maybe would do two hours in one studio, and they go, "Oh, now you, before you leave, you got to come in and do this that, 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 for another show." So I didn't really keep all that much track of it because it was just so much. I think my head would have exploded if I thought too <laughs> hard about it. But we were all—it you know, was this group of maybe ten, maybe six to ten people that were involved in every show. So um, we all had a great time. But they were all different. I mean, I know there's a character I did in one piece. I, for the life of me, can't remember who that was or what they did. But I know that that, that show is insane. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, but that's, that's just fantastic, though. And talking a little bit more about with regards to Mew Mew Power, because there was the trailer released for the reboot series, which has been in development for some time now. What's been your opinion, what's been your opinion on anime being rebooted? There's always stuff I think that that uh, will never be recaptured, and there's stuff that they they've gotten better at. But Mew Mew Power, I wasn't really in that that much, um, so I don't know that I really had an opinion uh, about what I was doing. It was again one of those shows that we were all just coming in and out and, and doing whatever voices um, they needed at the time. But I I know that it's, there's a, a rebirth all this stuff so i mean i hope it's i hope it's successful i mean those, they were really popular shows back when i was involved in them so but i haven't really kept track of what they're up to now but no that's fantastic and i think it's great to see that a lot of these classic anime is starting to get a bit of a resurgence in some way whether it's through full-on revival series or they're doing reboots to sort of i guess in a way sort of course correct like what was done in the original series in a way like sort of capture the original spirit but also improve upon it as well best example of that is definitely with um obviously with new new power in this case but also fruits basket and how they had the original cast members from the original series and brought them back into the reboot series because they wanted to keep it more obviously because those actors were amazing and everything but also with the reboot series they wanted to keep it much closer to the tone of the original manga as well which is a vastly different se series compared to what the original was like. So I think it's fantastic they're starting to do stuff like that. Yeah, well, I, again, I think because of, the, of my situation where, you know, um, I ended up not, you know, like I said, getting fired. I, I doubt that there'll be much of this stuff that I worked on that they will want me back. Because I've, I've heard stories, like I said, over the years of a certain redoing and they just get somebody else, you know. So, um, and I've, I'm right now with the, with all the, the dubbing and the, the script adaptations. I mean, I'm just about. I mean, that and music. There's like that. That's my day, you know. <laughs> so there's not a whole lot of room for other stuff right now, but there was. But that would be amazing, though, if any of these shows were to ever like get rebooted at some point down the line. Even if there was an opportunity for you to come back into any of those shows. That would be amazing. That would be fantastic. Well, if, if they want me to do it, I'd, I'd be more than happy to do it. I'm just, uh, I'm not going to hold my breath on that for the reasons I mentioned. But that would be great. That would I would still... love to revisit some of that stuff. There's a lot of stuff back there. Absolutely. That would be amazing. Now, talking just a little bit more about with regards to One Piece. Now, as many people will know, there's, of course, the four kids version. And, of course, we've got the Funimation version. Did you ever get the chance to see the Funimation version or meet any of the actors from that version, such as Colin Clinkerbeard, Chris Sabat, Brina Palencia, any of the actors from the Funimation version? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm friends with several people that work at Funimation, but I've never seen their version. I, I do 
know that there were, I think, plenty of people that did not like One Piece before kids. I mean, that's that's the rumor. Uh, at least that's what I kept hearing. But uh, I know Funimation is, is uh, they're constantly doing stuff. But I'm, I'm really, like, the, 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 the series that they took over, I'm really not that familiar with all that stuff. I mean, I... I've gone to Dallas and I like to go visit everybody, but but I'm just not that like I've never worked there. I know Michelle not has worked for Foundation, um, but not me. But, but no, that's that's fantastic though. But that's and that's really good to see that like as mentioned before that a lot of anime is starting to get like this resurgence in that. Obviously, I remember like the four kids One Piece version from like years and years back. And all the actors right. across on that did a really amazing job. They were all gr- they were all fantastic in terms of their performances and everything. And they're all amazing actors as well. And the Funimation version, in my honest opinion, and I love both versions for completely different reasons. And the Funimation version for me was just like One Piece, in my opinion, is still one of the best anime released in a long, long time. It's still yeah. absolutely fantastic. Uh-huh. That's great. Well, again, like I said, I have friends that work there, but. to a couple of them was when Dallas had the big electricity blackout was two years ago I mean I was I stayed online with them because they had no electricity they were like sitting you know candle power and all that kind of stuff so I really haven't had that much uh, communication with them recently you know I should but I that would be amazing though and just to like basically just get all of you in the same in the same room at a common convention somewhere alongside even with the pokemon people would be amazing it would be absolutely fantastic i would love that i'm all all for that stuff absolutely now now a bit of a funny question here is and a bit of a head scratcher on this one where do you hope to see yourself with acting and entertainment in the long run Uh, but that's that's just absolutely fantastic and i think definitely as you were speaking about of course with uh, being a musician for, first and foremost is that like it would be amazing if like all these different anime productions would ask you to personally write a song for any of these anime series or even work on the soundtrack as well that would be amazing well like i said they have a, the guy doing the music now and he's really talented i i, I just can't think of his last name because i'm an idiot but um, he handles all of the all of the stuff, and sometimes they will bring some uh, Japanese music in. I think they used to do that more in the past than they do now. But but uh, he's got the, the music covered, and I hope he doesn't hit me if he ever <laughs> listens to this interview. I'm just having a, a block, a mental block about his name. But he's brilliant, and he handles all of the the music production. So no, but that that's that's fantastic. Now here we've got a bit of a head scratcher on this one. 
What two shows have you worked on would you want to see a crossover between story-wise and character-wise? starting to think about that myself now and I think Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon would be a really interesting crossover actually uh-huh. that, would, that would actually be a really interesting crossover just because of that obviously because of the whole supernatural side of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! mixed in with like a, obviously the Pokemon in this of Pokemon if, if that's even a word um, that would be that would be a really that would be a really interesting crossover to have to do that would be that would be pretty amazing to see Absolutely, yeah. definitely, There's that would be fantastic. I mean, there's, I think there's something like 1,500 Pokemon now, or at least 1,000. And you know, when the show started out, there was 150. So it's just, it's just grown by leaps and bounds, you know. It's great. Absolutely, definitely. Now, look, now of course, looking back at your entire acting career and everything, what would you say has been like the one role that resonates with you the most? That's fantastic. No, that's absolutely fantastic. Now, another bit of a head scratcher on this one is looking back at like uh, obviously the animation, looking at the animation industry and the voice acting industry. What's been your view on where those two industries stands within the entertainment industry? No, they that's that's true. That that is just fantastic, though. And I will say this straight off the bat that like, and I I've said this across in many interviews that I've done, and I will say this to the day I die, in that if people people often ask me why is it that I, if people would ever ask me like why is it that you still go to comic conventions after like <laughs> after all this time, I go to meet the voice actors. They're my rock stars right there. Uh-huh. And I. I have- Oh, there for a while. Um, 
But absolutely. But no, it would be amazing. It would like it would be amazing to have you and even just some of the original cast members or even any of the cast members from the Pokemon series down in Australia just to have a reunion show. That would be amazing. Well, maybe that will happen. It sounds like a good idea to me. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, if you could change, and here's a bit of a head scratcher on this one here. If you could change one thing about the entertainment industry, what would that be? <laughs> there need to be more people with a sense of humor. <laughs> But fingers crossed, because that would be yes. that would be fantastic. That would be absolutely yes. amazing. Now, and without going into any spoilers, what's next for James Cutter Cathcart for the fans to know about? That's fantastic. No, that's absolutely fantastic. That's that's just wonderful. Now, and final question, what do you think Meowth would say if he was in Australia? Talk to the voice actors of the show, and we just had a blast. 
five hours because there were just like thousands of kids in line and I wanted to talk to everybody, you know. And of course, that there, we were Newcastle's really close to the Scottish border, you know, it's up really up north, much farther north than Liverpool. And some of them I couldn't understand anything they were saying. <laughs> so finally, there was somebody that took questions, and they would just, you know, repeat them. Um, and, and, and I did, so it was easier to understand. But some of those really thick northern <laughs> really is. Uh, to hear that, but um, it was a blast. Every second was a blast going there, and I'm sure that Australia would be just the same. Absolutely, oh, that would be fantastic. That's and that's just wonderful. That would be amazing. Well, we have to make it happen somehow because that would be amazing. Okay. Absolutely. Well, from your lips to God's ears, as they say. Absolutely. <laughs> no, but that, that's just wonderful. That's absolutely fantastic. James Carter Cathcart, thank you so much. It's been an absolute honor. That's very kind of you. It's great to talk to you, and you know, I'm glad we made this work. You know, and just hello, Australia. I love you. Can't wait to come. Can't wait to be there. Absolutely. And is there anything you would like to say to the fans out there in Australia and in the world? Well, thank you. I mean, it still astounds me that that uh, that Pokemon is 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 um, really loved by by so many people, and. Uh, Australia is a place that I've always wanted to go because it's so beautiful and you know just that whole part of the world and I'm you know being able to do things like this talking to you and kind of thinking about it uh, I'm, I'm just very grateful and hopefully soon I can you know show up and sell it <laughs> absolutely that would be that would be absolutely fantastic that would be amazing Right. Absolutely. Well, guys, if you'd like to find out more about James Carter Cathcart, you can check out the links which I'll put to in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe down below in the com down below. Don't forget to like, follow, check out the links below in the description. And if you've got any requests or suggestions, don't forget to comment below. Thank you all so much for listening. This is Simon and James Carter Cathcart signing off. Bye for now.